Hi everyone, welcome to Crafting in Quarantine. My name is Dabney. I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use they them pronouns. For today's episode, we are going to be making ornaments. Now, you know, you might be thinking that we're going to make an ornament like the ones that are back here on the tree. Um, and those are all valid options. There's lots of different ways you can make holiday ornaments. Um, it's it's really endless. Um, you can make them like kind of traditional. You can make them geeky. You can make them out of all different types of materials. Um, you know, like we've done a lot of crafts this year, um, doing things with perler beads, um, making things with clay. Um, even have one of the origami cranes we made right at the beginning of all this, um, back in April. So there's lots of options of like how you can make ornaments. But for this one, um, I wanted to show you all a new hobby that I've kind of rediscovered, and that is doing cross stitch. So here, this is a little kit, and it has all the things in it to make this cross stitch ornament. And I did one of these, um, you know, last week I think it was, I made um, one of these for a family member and it was like a lot of fun. Um, I just, you know, listened to audiobooks um, and then kind of, I wasn't really watching it, but I was like listening to the Dragon Prince because I'm trying to like catch up on that again. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like once you get used to it and like kind of get in the groove of doing it, it's um, it's kind of like soothing and meditative sort of. Um, and it's like, it's really cool. It's fun to make. Um, I honestly think that, you know, if you have patience um, and you can follow directions that like really anyone could do this. And, you know, a lot of the kits that you find in the stores you might not necessarily love the design, um, but the good news is you can look up cross stitch patterns online and, um, you know, use those. You can buy, like, you could buy a kit and, like, make your own design. Um, you know, they've got all the stuff in craft stores you would need for this. They've got the stuff in Walmart for this. Um, so, yeah, it's just something cool you can try and you know I love doing stuff with perler beads and um, perler bead designs are kind of perfect for cross stitch like you could very easily adapt a perler bead design that you found into a cross stitch pattern pretty easily but we're gonna get started on this we're not gonna do the whole entire thing because it is a time-consuming process um, you know the last one I did, um, I think it was about this size, and I did end up having to do, um, I ended up, like, you know, if this, this is the pattern we're going to do today, and the design that I did, I had to cross stitch almost the entire thing. Um, on this one, you don't have to cross stitch the background, so that's going to um, save some time, but, you know... I don't know. I mean, maybe this might take me five or six hours. I'm not sure. But again, like, that's kind of what makes this a nice present because people know that you've put, like, you know, a lot of time and effort into it. And especially if you can find um, a pattern that you think somebody would like, then that's even better. So, like, this one... Um, I know a lot of people who love cats. I love cats. My cat is right here. Um, he's very needy right now. Um, but yeah, lots of people I could think who would want this. Um, so yeah, we're going to just go over some basics and at least get started with this. So um, in this kit, it comes with your pattern here. On the back, it has instructions on how to do cross stitch. It comes with the cross stitch material that you'll be working on, and it comes with the different um, thread colors you'll be using. 
There's the little um, frame. And then this is the backing. So like once you've um, completed your cross stitch, you take a pencil and you put your frame on top of your fabric and you're going to like trace out and cut that out and stick it into the frame. Um, and then this is like an adhesive backing that goes on the back of your design um, to kind of like you know keep it secure in the frame and also to cover up the back where all your like little threads are sticking out. Um, you also have a needle. So we're gonna get started on this. So I kind of like was reading over the instructions um, beforehand. So um, a couple things about cross stitch. I'll go over the stitches as um, we begin, but it is really important to read over all the instructions before you begin. Um, the last project I just kind of like jumped into and I was like, I remember how to do this from when I was like a kid and I totally didn't remember what I was doing. So it is important to read the instructions. Um, so the first thing, one of the first things they do to, they tell you to do is to fold your material in half and then you fold it in half again the other way. And that way you're trying to find like where the center of your material is. And then on your pattern, you've got arrows here and you are gonna want to fold your pattern in half at those arrows. So it's, it was already like pre-folded here with the top arrow. And then this one, I folded it just a little while ago. So looking at that, this is the new center right here, these little dots. And on your cross stitch pattern, like each of these symbols, they correspond to a color you're gonna use. Um, so those little dots stand for dark brown. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of like, when I do cross stitch, I, it's kind of like when I make a puzzle. I don't want to start like in the middle, like that's not where I want to start um, sewing. So I'm actually going to start up here at the top of the ear. And I'm planning to do like the dark brown at the top of these two ears. Um, and maybe down there. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> you know, there's different methods on how you can do this. This is just um, how I prefer to do it. So first of all, I've got my dark brown thread here. And each one is composed of six different strands. Um, so I'm gonna pull this apart so you can kind of see the different strands. And they recommend that you um, pull all of the strands apart at the beginning. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna pull out two because when you're doing um, the cross stitch, you want to have two strands together. You don't want one, you don't want more than two, just two. And that gives it the right, you know, amount of thickness. And as you can tell, it can be kind of, you gotta just be patient separating <laughs> those strands from the rest of the thread. It gets kind of tangled up. And, okay. And then it's all, you just gotta, gotta straighten it out. Now, the nice thing about doing cross stitch is the needles are not sharp at the end. So you don't have to worry about like, you know, really pricking yourself the way you do when you're sewing. So then I just mm, put the end I just put it in my mouth. I mean, whatever. Um, if you're worried about germs, maybe you could have like a little cup of water or something next to you. And I just threaded it through the eye of my needle. And I usually pull like that much through. And then, um, you know, you could like knot it, but I never do. So 
I guess that's just like on you if you want to do that. Um, one thing I don't think we're going to get to in this video, because um, we're just actually going to get started and not really worry about some of the stuff down the road, is like there um, is something you have to do on here, which is like making a French knot. So again, these instructions that come with the kits are so detailed. Um, they really will, you know, walk you through all this. So I'm going to move this down. Um, and so we have, let's see, looking for the center. This is the center basically. And I'm just sticking my needle in here and kind of widening that to make it like kind of obvious to me, like that's the center. And I counted on my pattern, you know, from the center to the top of the ear. So you got, um... It's one, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven, eight. So eight up and one, two, three, four, four across. So this is kind of like you've got little squares here. So go one, two, oh gosh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and I'm sticking my needle in again just so I know. And then one, two, three, four. So that's where I'm going to put the top of the cat's ear right there. So, what you do is you um, stick your needle in. Um, and just pull it through and like I said I'm not knotting this so what I do is I just kind of like pinch it here with my finger again that's just me and then when you do a cross stitch you go from the bottom like left corner to the top right corner so just imagine this is a little square you do it like that you pull it through and then you're going to stitch from this bottom right corner up to the top left corner. So that is there. We've like marked off the top of the cat's ear. And then below that, there's two more stitches for um, the ear. So we're doing one and then right next to it I'm struggling. This, um, fabric I'm working with is a little bit tougher to, like, get the needle into than the other one I used. Um, okay. So, like that. And then I'm going to stitch those. Like so. Um, so you uh, you'll notice sometimes you'll be like overlapping, I guess, um, and that's fine, like, so here we go through here, I 
I don't know if this is, if y'all can really tell what I'm doing, but. Alright, so that's the tip of one of the cat's ears. So very small. And then looking down here at the pattern, I see you go over one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one is the next year. So, but I'm actually gonna count from the top up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, sorry, I'm just like double checking before I do this one. All right. Now, again, like I said, some people might do this differently than I am. Like, this is how the back of my cross stitch looks right now. It's kind of messy. I don't actually care <laughs> because, you know, when all is said and done, no one's going to see the back of the cross stitch. And I'm just hoping I space this out enough. But you know, it's it's easy to just take out stitches too. Um, I've had to do that before. And that's the thing. The main thing is to just be patient. Make sure you're counting correctly and, um, you know, following the design. I think when I was younger, um, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, it's right. Um, when I was younger, I used to kind of um, get like a Sharpie, not a Sharpie, like a highlighter, and I would highlight the portions I had already done. I don't know if that would be helpful to you or not, um, but it kind of helped me keep track of like where I was in the pattern. So we're just going to finish this dark brown part here um, where the cat's ear is. And some designs, like I did one the one I did last week was a quilting square. So it's a very geometric shape. And, um, you know, it was really pretty. Um, but it was like kind of a repetitive thing. This one is a, a lot more um, random, I suppose. Like, there's a lot of different colors all throughout the design. And I honestly think I liked the geometric more because then I would just kind of start working um, with like one color and then I'd be able to like work with it for a while before I'd have to like switch and start something else. So I kind of like that. This one, I'm like, you're just doing a little bit here and there and that's not exactly my favorite, but um, that's okay. This is going to be fun. It's going to turn out good. Um, the other thing I'll say is, we're not going to do it in the video, but there is something called a back stitch, which is what on this pattern you use to do the letters and to do the outline around the shape. And the instructions will like guide you through that, but when you do a back stitch, you're only using like one strand of thread instead of two. And the back stitch, like they have a really 
good guide here for what you're doing, but um, yeah, it's different from the cross stitch, but it's really easy to pick up like once you start doing it. Um, but yeah, that is our video for today. Um, just a little like intro guide into doing cross stitch. Um, again, you can find these at like Hobby Lobby and Walmart. They're really cheap, like usually a small kit like this is a couple dollars maybe. Um, so it's again something that, you know, is a good project to work on um, and makes a really fun gift. So yeah, um, that's it for today and tune in Friday. I'm going to be doing another um, video on manga series you can binge. But yeah, I hope you're having a good week. And if you're you know, taking a break from school. I hope you're enjoying that. Come by the library, get some books, get some, you know, movies to watch, and talk to you later. Bye!